Manga is a medium where you kind of just don't stop reading ever, you know, you never really stop and smell the roses of like the catalog that you've already got on. You just kind of keep adding things on forever and ever until like you're a couple years down the road and you're back in like your local Barnes and Noble, you're looking at the stuff on the shelves and you're like, hey man, I was reading One Piece, I love this series, I stopped around like the Alabasta arc, but that's like, I don't know, like 30 volumes in or anything like that, I wonder how much more like really went on with that series, let me just say, over 100! So with manga, we find out that, you know, finishing series really don't happen a lot, they just end up going on and on, either the creator wants to make it last forever, or we're just gonna end up in a never ending hiatus where the series will never return and we'll never find out what truly happens at the end of the story, and sometimes it's nice to know that there are manga out there that actually do have an ending and actually did come to a conclusion for the entire series and today we're going to be celebrating that by giving you guys the top five manga that is completed this is going to be a great time and all these top five i have read and i'm only including series that i've read because i can't tell you if it's the best of all time if i've never actually read it so that's unfortunate sorry no vagabond no uh osami poon poon none of that i'm sorry i just haven't read them yet i just have not got the time to actually finish these series. I know they're amazing and they might be in the top five. So if you have a series that you really wish that was in the top five that's not in here, I'm sorry, but I probably didn't read it. So that's uh, uh my fault, but I don't want to be a liar. I'm not Mr. Liar, man. I'm, I'm trying to give you guys the truth. So this will be the definitive list, in my opinion, of the top five finished manga of all time. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. <laughs> Before we get to this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you feel that I deserve it. It means a lot. It lets me know that you guys enjoy this kind of content. It means a lot, and just enjoy the video. Thank you so much. So we're actually going to start with an honorable mention. I wanted to put this in the top five, but it is a manhwa, not a manga, so it felt disingenuous. But I want to say that I do think this is in the top five. At the same time, I don't know what I would have kicked out to put this in here, but this is my favorite manhwa of all time. It is absolutely an amazing series, and the series I am talking about is Sweet Home. This series follows Hyun Cha. I'm just gonna call him Cha because I'm probably gonna mess it up as this goes. It's basically like a tongue twister for me. So I'm gonna just call him Cha. And Cha is a character who ends up moving to this new hotel after some mysterious stuff happens to him beforehand, which gets revealed throughout the story and throughout the entire series. So he enters in this hotel and then all of a sudden there are these monsters that start popping up all over the world. And it seems like the world is basically ending because everybody is getting this virus that's not the zombie virus, it's not the walk dead it's not that basic zombie crap and they're turning into these crazy ass monsters that just absolutely destroy everything and are way overpowered and just really can give humans no chance they're like later in there's some rumors about them being like the higher evolution of mankind and stuff like that and what they could actually be because no one truly knows what they are and why they have it and things like this and so this series just resolves around Hyun and the people in the apartment trying to survive and with this this is a very claustrophobic horror series. This is so nice. I love this series so much. It has so many dark themes it deals with, like suicide and things like that, which is not good that you know that it's in there, but it, it, it does it in a really tasteful and good way. And it really makes the series feel really grown up in a way that takes itself very seriously and does a great job at doing it. The art on top of it is absolutely amazing. It is really horrific and terrifying with how some of these monsters look and some of the scenes that end up going on throughout Sweet Home. And to watch these characters do their thing and just try to survive and watch the mental breakdown, watch the betrayal, watch the insanity, the chaos, the pressure, all this stuff that goes on within Sweet Home is absolutely amazing. Hyun has to deal with so many crazy things that goes on this story, all within this apartment building. So it stays very small, which I love because everything's always trying to be like, you know, like One Piece, it's going everywhere. We're going exploring as many things as possible. Like Orient, it's all about going over throughout the world and things like that. And this is just feels very small and claustrophobic, especially for even like a zombie series like this, where it's only like Zom 100, and he's traveling all over Tokyo and all over Japan, the greater parts of Japan, to do his bucket list of the dead, which is amazing and a great series. I love Zom 100, but this series has such a different feel from any other type of manga or manhwa that I've read that where it just feels so small and compact and trapped. You feel trapped like they are throughout this film and not, well, the live action, but I haven't 
seen the live action, but the series, and this is on Webtoon, so you guys want to read it for free, and the series just feels so claustrophobic in a good way that really just stresses you out in how a horror series should. It really pulls you into the series and makes you stressed out for these characters, makes you want these characters, some to live, some to die, and all these crazy scenarios that end up going on with it, and it's overall just a perfectly crafted series that I cannot ever get enough of. But anyway, that's that. Let's get into our actual top five. For number five, we have Slam Dunk. In my opinion, the best sports manga ever created. I think this purposely not only encompasses basketball, but what it's like to play a sport overall. It does everything perfect in the story. It follows Hanamichi Sakuragi, who at first doesn't want to play basketball, but through a series of events ends up getting roped into playing basketball and over the time slowly learning to love the sport of basketball. And now because I played basketball, this does have a special place in my heart because it's a lot more personal to actually know what the sport's like and actually get to see it. And this series does an amazing job at showcasing how basketball is. On top of that, with the perfect art that Inori does, like, Oh man, we're talking about masterpiece of drawing and artwork. That's just like, man, can you ever get enough of this dude's art? He is one of the best artists in all of the world. And if not, like arguably the best artist ever for manga and stuff like that. So he is amazing and makes this series come to life so much more than it would with probably any other artist. And his love for basketball really shows through with his knowledge and things of the sport that we get to see throughout the series. And it really showcases what basketball is actually like and you can tell that he actually loves basketball himself and that he's really into it with all the stuff that goes on within the series which really adds to it because it's just a guy who loves basketball writing a manga about basketball when you could really feel that through the story and everything with how the story progresses and how the difficult challenges that Sakuragi and the other members of the basketball team face as they're progressing through this manga is just so perfect it's so entertaining it pulls you in and as they're playing these games and having these battles against these different schools and things like that it's just oh man i cannot tell you and describe the feeling that it gives you unless you played a sport and you know what it's like to be on that crunch time and you're like right before winning you're that game winning shot you're that game winning hit score whatever sport you're playing and however you score your point in that sport this series just really makes that feeling come alive and just puts you on the edge of your seat with only another series like Haiku ever able to do for me but I think this one edges out Haiku overall just with how great the art is how perfect this series is and just overall everything about this series encompasses and pulls together so perfectly that I can't just say anything but good things about it and well, Haikyuu is just as amazing in my opinion. I think Slam Dunk just edges it out with its art and with its overall story. It's just a perfect series and you gotta read it if you've never read it. It's the perfect sports manga. It's the 10 out of 10 would read again. Anyway, let's get on to number four. For number four, we have Uzumaki by Junji Ito. In my opinion, the magnum opus of Junji Ito, his perfect series. This is an absolutely amazing series. It's not even that long to read. So if you guys are worried about a series being too long, this is only three volumes. And that's all it needs. That's how good this series is to be on the top five of completed manga of all time. It only needs three volumes. And that speaks to how good this series really is. It is probably one of the best crafted manga horror series ever made. And... Like I said, I do think this is his best work. I don't think that Geo or Tomi are any better, which I think are probably the runners up for what people would say are the other top series of his. And so Uzumaki follows Goshima as she comes to this new town and then a bunch of strange happenings start going on within this town where like strange spiral themed items and stories end up coming on and unraveling, so to speak, within the story. And we get to see how this all ends up tying up in the end. At the beginning of this story, it kind of seems like it's almost like short stories like a lot of his other series are. But as it goes on, we get to see that all these characters and things that have been happening throughout the story are all very very much intertwined with each other and so this really ends up leaning on and letting the whole series craft out and space out perfectly i think the three volume length of it is the perfect amount that it needed for telling this story where it didn't feel like it was being rushed but it didn't feel like he was dragging it out he spent the right amount of time i believe 
on this story where it doesn't really need any more of it and it doesn't need any less of it. I think it's the perfect amount where you don't really want to pull anything of the stories out because it takes context away and you don't really need much more for it because you don't need everything explained for you in this manga. I, and I'm going to be honest right here. It doesn't explain everything within the story and it doesn't give you every answer. But I think that's the beauty of this story at the same time is you don't get all the answers you have to kind of craft it up yourself and it makes it really fun because at this point you become part of the writers you become the author of the series yourself because you get to craft different meanings and things in your head why things are happening why people did the things they did why these things are happening what's going on within this story because you get to become the author of the series and these other plot points that didn't get put together completely which I think that Junji Ito did on purpose because it seems like this series is so extremely thought out that he did not do things like leaving plot holes or leaving mysteries without this intent in mind of wanting it there and wanting it to maybe be up to the readers or just wanting it to be open for interpretation because having everything handed to you within a story like this I think would really pull back at how great this series actually is and that's not to say that this series just leaves you there lost in the dark the whole time. It guides you along. It, it does leave, leave like a little dim light on there as you start. It's like there's like a hand holding you. You got this little light that you then a little line you can follow. And then you're seeing glimpses of stuff as you're going throughout. But it gives, gives you a really nice path to follow that's easy to follow. And really good to understand the overall concept of the series. And the overall themes, happenings, what's going on, and why it's going on. And this really entertaining path that you get to follow with the mystery that surrounds it overall in this greater span of what truly happens within this town. And this series does such a perfect job with its art at the same time. Like all these other series, its art is just on point and just perfect. And this series does everything it needs to to craft it into a bone-chilling horror series that I would never actually say... For any other series, I would never actually say is scary or unsettling or anything like that. Even Geo, I found would be fun. I love Geo, but it, I would never describe it as scary. I would describe it as creepy and maybe gross at times, but Uzumaki had genuinely spooked me at certain points with how this series crafted itself and how uneasy it was able to make me feel through these manga pages and really make this series feel like it's coming to life and kind of nervous that I might be end up in like this spiral little cylinder at one point and it's just a perfectly crafted series and another series to definitely check out and in my opinion the best horror manga of all time let's get on to number three well here we go number three the big one this is my Kishimoto yes it's Naruto the ninja story of the world in my opinion Probably one of the most influential worldwide manga out there along the lines of Attack on Titan and Dragon Ball would I would say the only two that are as influential in the US audience. One Piece is big, but I feel like One Piece isn't as big as these other two for like a general audience. Like if you go up to someone and say Naruto, 99% of people are going to know what you're talking about. One Piece, I feel like a lot of people are going to think that you're talking about the swimsuit. So I do think that Naruto has a greater general audience influence. And with Naruto, I believe it is one of the best finished big three Shonen Jump series of all time. This series had such a personal big impact on me overall in my life. Not only in myself personally but I was actually able to get some of my friends to actually read it and there's never really a time where I actually get any of my friends to read any manga or watch any anime so it was a big thing to be able to actually have a series where I could actually get them into it so the only other series I've really been able to do that with is Seven Deadly Sins and Castlevania and so it, you know, it really speaks to how great this series is to get people who don't even really like manga or anime to really get into that series and turn them into that little bit of weave that's inside of all of us. Again, if you don't know how, what Naruto is, it follows Naruto Uzumaki as he goes on this quest to become the Hokage and amazing things end up going on along the way. The least, my least favorite thing about this is how the series ends. I really don't like that they don't give us like, not only, not even a where are they now, but like an actual conclusion to the series. We don't even get to see him. This is spoilers for Naruto, but I don't know how you guys don't know this at this point. It's a bit a long series. So Naruto in the ending of the series doesn't actually show us become the Hokage. It just is the first chapter of Boruto, which I really don't like because it was really just Kishimoto or Shonen Jump probably more likely than Kishimoto wanting to continue the series to get more money. So 
it's unfortunate not to be able to see him finish up his journey, even if it was like a sped up version of getting to see how he becomes Hokage. Everything else in this series is absolutely perfect, though. Like, some of the best fights in the entire thing. Like, oh, man. Like, are we talking about the, uh, the Akatsuki pain? Oh, the pain fight is so good. Madara, all these other fights that are within their Zabuza, which is my favorite first arc at all of anime and manga, is just absolutely perfect. And one of the best perfectly crafted things with that, with Haku and all these other characters in there. It's just so amazing. And Naruto just is such a good series to make you fall in love with the characters, the side characters, the, how they're connected within each other. Man, I have never cried in a manga, but with Jiraiya, are we talking, are we serious right now? Jiraiya. I am like, I don't even need the anime version to like ball out. I would probably be in a, a hard depression for several weeks if I had to watch the anime version of that. And it's just absolutely amazing. It does so well at telling this story. And it's just so perfectly crafted and entertaining for one of the best and most entertaining shonen fighting series of all time. Every battle gets better than the last. Every storyline just weaves itself perfectly within other stories in the series and it just crafts itself perfectly within this entire series. Every character is amazing except Sasuke. I hate Sasuke. I hope he actually, without all this plot armor, he gets every freaking episode and week. Ugh. And all these characters are just absolutely amazing and I love it and I just can't get enough of the story. It does such a perfect job at making characters to love and to hate and the art works perfectly with this series. Kishimoto does an absolutely fantastic job with it. The story never feels stale. The story always gets better. It always progresses nicely. I love how the series wraps up overall, but I, again, like I did, I did miss him not getting to see him become Hokage, but overall, I love this series and it does such a great job within it and I can't get enough of this series. It's absolutely perfect. you got to read Naruto if you've never read Naruto. Give it a chance. It's on Shonen Jump. If you have the Shonen Jump vault, it's like $2 a month. You can read the whole series, like all 700 chapters for free on top of the $2 a month. But let's get on to number two. No, 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 we have, in my opinion, the best sci-fi series of all time. And this series is actually a very down-to-earth realistic sci-fi thriller series that focuses more on real-life drama with the sci-fi stuff kind of more subtly intertwined with it, and that series is 20th Century Boys. Now, 20th Century Boys follows Kenji, who had a club with all of his friends, and it was all about them talking about who is going to take over the world, the hero saving the world, and things like that. And what if that childhood little dream that you guys had and that fun little playtime and fake scenarios you were playing actually ends up coming to life and becoming a real later in his life. And that's what happens. Kenji ends up growing up. He ends up going away from all of his friends, but starts to notice these strange things happening in the news and strange things that are happening within the world that are just oddly similar to the thing that he had as a child. And... He ends up having to go on this journey of trying to defeat this character that is going on known as the friend and we get don't know who the friend is until the very end and we have he has to defeat him by getting all of his older friends and people from his past and having to fight against this great evil whose goal is to take over the world and you know do whatever he planned to do in the past as their child is little like enemy villains and hero stories goes on and this series is absolutely amazing naoki urasawa i cannot tell you i don't even i haven't read monster yet but i don't know if this can beat monster in my opinion because this series like it's so hard to describe how perfect this series is i had not felt a love for a series in a long time. There was a really big lull in these series where I was just kind of like enjoying them. They were okay. There weren't a lot of series out there that were really pulling me in. But then one day I decided to get 20th Century Boys and just check it out because I heard that my friends uh, Alex really loved it. And after saying this and like not reading it for like several years, I ended up finally deciding uh, I'll just check it out. You know, screw it. I'll just go for it. And man, did this not revitalize my love for manga in just an instant. It instantly came and gave me all the feelings that I was missing in 
anime and manga that I wasn't just getting for that long time. I wasn't getting that fix of that love, of that excitement, of that drama, of that sadness, of all those emotions that used to make me cry when I watched an anime series, but I kind of felt numb for the longest time and that kind of stuff. It was just okay series and things like this, but this series brought that love back to life in a perfectly crafted series about a friend group from the past who had to get back together to save the world. It's an amazing series that really grounds itself in a lot of real life things. There's not magic, there's not these superpowers, and what I mean by stuff, tell you, I, I'm not gonna tell you, because it's just much better going in blind and not really knowing the overall work of the series. The less you know, the better in this kind of series. Just, just know the art, 10 out of 10, perfect. Like uh, like always and like all these other series, it's just so amazing, I love the art. Oh man, the, the references to classic rock is so amazing. All these different references and things like that to old classic rock stuff is so amazing. Like here, here's my here's my little tip for you guys if you're gonna read 20th Century Boys. Get yourself a little quiet reading corner. Find a nice little spot in the house where you can do this in between mommy and daddy's yelling and fighting, and just open up the book. Go to Spotify, go to Pandora, go to YouTube, go to whatever you use, and just get a playlist of classic rock, play it, and just read the series. It'll make it come to life in such a different level that like, oh man, especially if you start listening to the songs as, as they're being mentioned within the series because they'll talk about actual songs that came out within it. And if you listen to these songs as it comes out, oh man, on another level of good. Oh man, I just can't get enough of this series. It really is such an amazing series that does everything perfect, everything. There's This series is genuinely, there's not a single part in this series where I'd say it needs to be changed. It is genuinely, the most 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, five star series I've ever read. I think it is the most perfect series for a sci-fi, for a seinen, for just an overall really entry level series besides one more series, which is my number one. Funnily enough, you know, I plan that out a little bit. This series just does everything right. And if you want to get somebody into anime and manga and they're older, they're an adult, give them this series. Promise you, give them the series. They like their sci-fi, they like their drama, they like their thrill, they like their action, they like anything like that. I promise you, it's gonna pull you in and just like keep you there. It's just gonna be like Stockholm Trends. You're gonna be like, I wanna put it down. And like, like later on you're like, I can't put it down. I have to read it forever. I can never give up this series. I genuinely didn't wanna finish the series because I knew it was over. Because like, I knew I was getting to the end of the series. And I was like, I told my girlfriend at one point that I was like, man, I don't think I can finish this series because if I finish this series, I feel like I'm gonna feel like empty inside. It's just gonna be nothing less because once it's over, it's over. I genuinely teared up multiple times throughout this fi this not film throughout this manga. It's uh, just such a perfectly crafted manga and does everything right. But there is one series that I can say definitively is the number one series of all time. And you might have thought it was that series with how much I fanboyed over it. But there's one series I think is supreme to this series, and we're gonna get into that right now. Number one. Full Metal Alchemist. A series that follows Edward Elric and Alfonso Elric on a series just to get their body and arms back. People who, in a world of alchemy, decided to cross a line and do a taboo that was just too much and ended up not only costing them their arms and legs and their entire physical body, but probably the sanity in a little bit, getting to see your mom come back as a zombie person is not probably the best situation to be in. And not the, you know, really a thing that, you know, 20 years down the line in the therapist's office, you're really gonna wanna talk about. But this series is the most amazing series I have ever read. And part of the reason why I put this in number one, I genuinely think it deserves a spot. This was the third, no, second series in my beginning of manga. My friend Josh one day brought in Baki Gaiman. That series was absolutely amazing. I love Baki Gaiman. It was a five volume series. Absolutely amazing. But then he brought in a series that I could definitely say would change my life forever because Baki Gaiman was good, but it never really sparked up that love of manga and that lifelong obsession that it would be like Full Metal Alchemist did. Now, this series is something we read all throughout high school. We ended up renting it from the library. We'd read it as much as we can. We'd each try to like borrow books from each other. He'd finish a book, then I'd finish it, and then we'd talk about it. I have such good fond memories of this series. And the way it ended, we were both ended up crying in like a study hall at the end because seeing how the series officially ended and how sad we were to see the conclusion of this series, it's just something that I'll never forget. It's because this series does everything it needs to 
to take these like just I don't know like bass sized fish hooks and just l stab them into your heart and just never let go because once you start the series you're hooked on it for a lifetime it is not a series I think that you could just go in reading and read the whole thing and come out and just forget about it I think it's genuinely the most perfectly crafted series of all time I love this series on such a different level and it's so undeniably perfect in every way that it does from its art to its character to its story to its plot to any little detail from the power structure and the power scaling and the powers within the series the battles everything about this series is perfect there's not a single thing in this series that isn't exceeding my expectations in every way and I just can't help but just fanboy over this series until the day that I die. I think it is genuinely the most perfectly crafted series ever. And it will never, ever, I think, in my opinion, I don't think there will ever be a series that is quite like Full Metal Alchemist and could ever capture the feelings and the love and just the perfection that that series has ever created. I think it is stands atop all other manga in a lot of ways. To becoming the best thing ever crafted in all of anime and manga in history and that's a hill I might die on that's a hill I could really strongly advocate for and I know there's a ton of good series out there and it's hard to say definitively that one series is better than all the rest but there is no series that an experienced veter veteran within manga who's somehow never read Full Metal Alchemist but you know come in like 20 years down the line read it and not come out thinking the series is perfect and one of the best things ever and someone who's just like the most basic level person who's just reading Captain Underpants and Diary of the Wimpy Kid can go into this and be like this this is this is something else I'm broken at the end of this I I, I love these characters I love all these characters I feel so much for all these characters it is genuinely on a different level from any other manga that I think I've ever read and it stands at like the pinnacle and the peak that only very few manga I can say belong up there and it's just oh man it's just undeniably perfect in every way and i really wish that if you guys have never read full metal alchemist give yourself a chance if you guys want your friends to get into manga give them full metal alchemist there's just i just don't see a way that someone reads full metal alchemist and can come out being like no i actually don't want to read anything more like this if like this is the perfect entry level series it's the perfect baseline for how all manga should be it is just an absolute front runner of the industry and it is just the best thing ever Arakawa just such a perfect job at crafting this series i don't know how they got their inf inspiration for this but all i know is it's perfect you did a great job. Round of applause, Nobel Peace Prize. You get every single award because whatever you did to make this series, I, I don't think I don't think could ever be recreated like this again. I genuinely think it's that perfect and that above everything else. And just absolutely an amazing series that is just the best completed manga of all time. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think about my top five list? You guys probably hate it. You guys wish Attack on Titan was on there. I really do bet you do, but I've only been watching the anime, so I actually don't know how it ends yet. So I didn't put it on here because I felt a little bit dishonest to put it on there. I love the anime and I would wait till the anime ended, even though like the final season has been going on for like half a year now and they've been showboating the final season headline for like ever just to get more views because, you know, companies be companies and money be money. And this series that I put in here. What do you guys think about it? Do you agree? Do you hate it? Do you love it? What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments down below. Please let me know your guys' opinion. What would you do for the list? Do you guys have any other video ideas you'd like me to do? But anyway, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I hope you guys have a great week. And as always, I will see you in another video.